Hey everyone, so we're actually going to look at what I consider the top five scenes in Arcane. Now these are basically emotional and character building scenes in Arcane. Now some of you actually might think that the fighting scenes were pretty good. You know, like the scene between Echo and Jinx, or maybe one of the fights between Vi and Savika. And there's, there's a lot to be said about that, but I want to put the fight scenes away in a corner for, for right now. And just look at what I consider really powerful emotional scenes in Arcane. And of the five, I, I would just say number five, uh, would be this one right here. So this is the conversation uh, Silco has with Vander's statue. Now I had actually created another video about this because one of the things that really popped up in my head at the time was why is this statue even here when you think about it? I mean, didn't Silco really hate Vander? I mean, if, if Silco was in charge, most likely this statue wouldn't even be around or in as good condition as it is. It just seemed kind of strange to me. But putting that aside, and I kind of get to it in the, in the video, you know, this is just a wonderful character building moment. And in a way, it kind of cements in my eyes that Silco was not about manipulating Jinx for the entire, you know, six episodes or so. That he really did care for her. Because up until that point, you could kind of read it either way. Depending, depending on what you really thought of Silco. You could kind of think, you know, maybe at the end of episode three that he was just saying these things just just to manipulate her for whatever end. And the stuff that he, he talks, he says uh, to Jinx when, you know, dealing with the crystal or when dealing with the baptism scene because he wants her to, to build the weapon. You know, he's doing these things so that uh, she can, you know, function it properly and, and do the right thing for his particular uh, means. Now, of course, you can, you can read it in a different way as well. I mean, the scenes are kind of set up that you can actually look at from two different angles, which is, which is wonderful. But this scene pretty much says that, you know, given the fact that Jace almost gave everything Silco wanted on a silver platter, almost no strings attached from Silco's point of view anyway, which is a very interesting thing in and of itself. If you really look at the conditions that Jace actually gave uh, Silco, if you think about that, and you think about the things that Silco actually says in this conversation, it says a lot more about Silco than you would initially think about. So Silco ends up not being like this really evil drug lord that Echo and Vi paint him out to be. He's a bit more complex than that. Which, which, which really makes it wonderful. And the, another thing about this is the whole conversation, depending on how you interpret it, could be interpreted in a very negative manner uh, with respect to Jinx. And that's exactly how Jinx takes it. <laughs> oh, that leads to a, a tragic situation uh, towards the end of episode 9. But... It's just well done. I mean, I just, I love how this scene opens. I love the camera angles. I, the voice acting is just like wonderful, just strong here. It's wonderful. And everything like that. So, if you, if you have never, haven't really taken a good look at this scene, just kind of whizzed by it, I would go back and look at it a couple of times. Just think about what Silco is actually saying. And you might connect a few dot, extra dots there. So there's that scene. Then the next one is, is this one right here. So there is, there's a lot going on in this scene as well. I mean, from a cinematic point of view, this, this scene is, is so wonderful. So that's why I put this as number four. So when I mean, you think about this, the flare was, of course, given to Jinx pow slash powder in episode three. And Vi had pretty much said to her that, you know, if you ever need her, just to put that flare out and she'll come. 
and there's of course a lot of tension up to this point because you're wondering if Vi will actually notice the flare. Will she be able to see it and come to her in time? Or will the flare just blow out and Jinx gets slash powder gets upset, throws it away and leaves. So so there's there's that kind of tension that's building up. You you see the wonderful 360 degree pan. And that's also a nice a nice touch right in with the music. It's just like a dramatic thing right there. And what is fascinating about this scene is you you kind of get an indication of Jinx slash Powder has very complex feelings towards Vi in this particular uh, reunion situation. First time that they met, see each other again, and you know, for example, if you were just to think about what happened in episode three, you you think it was just like all that she had for Vi, for Violet Vi is you know hatred for being abandoned, but it's 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 more than that, you know it's you see it and it's like it's the sadness, it's the suspicion, it's it's some a little bit of an anger, and of course there's a little bit of mental instability going on as well, and it's just a wonderful theme there where you see all the complexity going on, and and of course you you, you see the situation where Vi gets kidnapped again, so it's like oh my god, here's same thing happened. Uh, towards the episode episode three from of course in this point of view from jinx's jinx slash powder's point of view <laughs> and she's really upset about it so it's it's there's this it's just just a, a lovely roller coaster of emotion as well as in this case a uh, vice sees how far crazy to a certain extent you know jinx slash powder has has gotten so you know it's like whoa Things are not exactly uh, what I thought, but like, it's, you see, there's there's this one line where she's like, where Jinx slash Powder says, you know, that she's changed, and you have to, and and Vi seems to accept that, and but he's like, you can take the timing and the way she says it two different ways. <laughs> And, and that kind of adds a little bit of amb ambiguity there. It's, it's just like the the writing and of the words that are said by the various characters. It's like you can see where one character would would interpret it one way, and then another character just actually means it in, a, in, in not exactly the same context. And so it's like, hmm, situation, and it's it's just wonderful. So there's this thing from episode six. So now we're going to move on to what I consider. Number three. This this one is just lovely. So, from episode one, very beginning, is this three minutes of just just pure visual storytelling. It starts off with Powder kind of singing this song. You don't you don't see her singing the song except about part way, and you know the echoey kind of eerie uh type of song here as the, as the two girls walk through the chaos that is you know this fight on the bridge the carnage that is all over the place the kind of the scaredness and the hopelessness that you see on their faces it's it's really a wonderful scene in that no dialogue is exchanged here you don't even hear any narration nothing like that all of done all this is done is through just facial expressions gestures camera angles it, it's it's fabulous i mean you look at the at the scene where vander kind of realizes that violence is not exactly the answer or it really didn't bring what he thought to the situation so kind of a change of heart from right there and of course he mentions it later in the episode but it, you just see that and it's like wow and you you see the the anger and you know the just kind of pouring out of vi's eyes at, at the scene where she looks towards piltover 
and that shot from the bridge looking up. And that actually kind of echoes <laughs> a little bit in episode three, which is actually fascinating even of itself. But there's like, there's so much going on in this scene that really just kind of grabs at the heartstrings. And, and without all the extra stuff that you know, poor writers would do, it just pretty much shouts, it's like, this show knows how to actually write a good story without saying anything. And it really, really grabbed me. Now, the rest of the episode was, just, was not as grabby. But it basically showed, this, sh this show is kind of dark. And it can get into really dark places. But the people who are doing this know what they're doing. I was like, I, okay, I'm sold. I'm just going to at least watch it for a while and see how it what happens. Very good. Which, then we move from this to what I consider number two. And I actually split number two into two parts. Because it's one large scene. And it's kind of hard to say if this is actually one thing or two things. So, first off is what happens up to this point. So, episode three is just, it's a, it's a tragedy. It's not exactly like a, a slow-moving train wreck or the Titanic, but you, you look at all the things that have gone on, set up from episode one to what happens here, and you're, you're, you're thinking, it couldn't have been done any other way. The characters, the way their personalities are, the way they think, basically, it's like, each character couldn't probably wouldn't have come to a different conclusion or done anything differently. And it just kind of happened in this way to end up in, a, in just a set of really unfortunate circumstance. Think about it. So, you know, Vi was trying to set up uh, Powder so that, you know, she would have confidence in herself and know that she could handle certain situations. But... In the particular situation where Vander was kidnapped by Silco, because in and, and of course Van, Silco saw the opportunity because of the bombing, so this is like wow. And you know, Powder wants to do you know certain things for the family, so so again she she was feeling slightly abandoned and all that. So of course she would you know try to figure something out and help even though she was told not to so there you know there was that there was that conflict right there you know where Vi was actually had thinned mixed signals though not intentionally it was just it was just kind of the wording that happened and here in this particular scene is like because of what happened here that Vi was like so torn up with emotion I mean, it's, it's, if you haven't seen episode three, uh, I would I would watch it uh, right away. And, uh, and the thing is, is that when you look at this, so we Vi and the team were so close to getting out. Now, basically, the room was probably on the second story. So, and of course, the mutant was on the other side of the door, punching it in. So it wouldn't have been really easy to get out. But there's a good chance that. Clagger, Milo, and Vander could have escaped. And there's also a good chance that if Powder hadn't put three stones in, maybe just one, one would, probably would have been enough. And would have, everyone would have saved the day, and you know things would have been a hunky dory. But instead, the explosion was too powerful and killed people, which is what happens. You, you throw a bomb, people die. And the thing is, is that Powder didn't know that initially, but when Vi like finds out that it was Powder who set off the explosives and killed everyone, of course she's like really upset. This is the second time her parents died, practically. Because remember, if you remember in the very first episode at the very beginning, you, you see the fact her parents were killed because of whatever the riot or whatever happened on the bridge. And now, her second father, Vander, is dead. And her, practically, brothers are dead. 
So obviously, this is someone like overloaded with emotion. And and on top of that, of course, Powder's done it. So like the one that she cares the most is done the thing. So so you can kind of you can kind of see exactly how this reaction would have occurred. I mean, she slaps Powder and calls her a jinx. Even though she really didn't mean it, she lashed out. Which, the thing is, like, if you see from the first episode of Moving Forward, that is the kind of common response that Vi has learned to a certain extent. It, it helps her survive to lash out, lash out at something. And this is just, in a way, in this particular scene where, where it's like totally screws everything over. But it's kind of a normal response to what's happened. And then, c considering Vi's character, she's, she, she pulls away because, obviously, she, she punched, uh, well, actually slapped uh, Powder by mistake. So it's like, I, 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 need, I need time to, you know, gather myself. I need to get away a little bit. So she creates space. She goes around the corner. And from Powder's point of view, it feels like, you know, she got yelled at. She got slapped. And Vi has, like, abandoned her. So it was like, it's, it's like, oh, crap. <laughs> it's, it's really sad. It's really tragic. And then the stuff that happens after that is it, it, just, like, just piling stuff on top of each other. It's like one unfortunate cir circumstance on top of another to create this kind of unfortunate, you know, chasm between these two people. So there, there's that that gets created, and it's just, it just, just wonderful. And not, not only that, of course, the direction and, and, and everything as well. And then we move into this scene, which is, for the most part, in the same location. It's just that, of course, Vi was busy uh, elsewhere, and Silco comes, comes in. And typically, here, this is where the villain would probably do some nasty stuff. But what was actually interesting here is that... You know, Silco had the knife, and probably would have killed Powder in normal circumstances. But in this particular case, Powder was pretty much like, you know, you know, she's not my sister. Of course, she she's like this in this particular instance right here, right here. I mean, like she felt abandoned and everything, and she just like tries to cling on to any. And a kind of stability, uh, and Silco just happens to be the closest person. And Silco, instead of like grabbing her or anything, r you know, wraps his arm around her, which you know, you can see the hesitation, but the kind of like, oh, kind of he's he's surprised by his own reaction, but then understands it to a certain extent. And, you know, he says, you know, we'll show them, we'll show them all. So you, you, you get the idea that, you know, Silco saw something in her that is similar to his spirit. Because after all, he was uh, betrayed uh, by Vander. So there's, you know, kind of a certain kindred spirit, so to speak. And he, of course, goes later on to take care of her. And this is just a wonderful a turn of events and just a wonderful scene in general. And so, of course, this one and the previous one are in the same place. So I give this, you know, like just the, you know, top of, of top five, so this top two slot. <laughs> now, some of you are like, some of you might think this is the top one slot. And it was like, I, I would not disagree with you. The whole scene towards the, at episode three is just absolutely wonderful. But for me, the, the top slot has, has to go to... This scene right here, which is pretty much the last scene in episode 9. Now, of course, there are things that happen uh, towards the very end that make you go, what? <laughs> and I can understand that. It, it's kind of like, here's, a, here's an entire series with 9 episodes. It probably should have had 10, uh, which probably would have helped flesh out some issues uh, that surface if you really think about the series. And actually, I want to go with that into that in a, little, in a different video but here is just wonderful so there, there's a whole lot going on and a fair a fair amount actually has been foreshadowed in different episodes so first off which is really interesting here is look at this eating arrangement so you can see you know Vi on one side and Silco on the other so there's very clear 
the clear situation of Vi versus Silco, which is what this story has been about to a certain extent. They, they have two completely different views of Powder slash Jinx. So, of course, the seating arrangement in that aspect makes plenty of sense. What's also very interesting is if you notice in this particular picture, you will see that the Jinx chair is closer to Silco. And the Powder chair, while not very obvious, is actually very close to Vi. And again, if you see it, it's, Vi, it's on Vi's right side and Silco's right side. Not the left side, the right side, which is interesting in and of itself. You see that the thing for Vander is straight in the middle between Silco and Vi on one side, and you also notice that Clogger and Milo's, I guess, dolls, so to speak, are on the other side. So the the kids of Milo, Clagger, and Powder are on the uh, are on the opposite side of Vander's chair. So that's kind of that's kind of interesting in and of itself. The, the whole seating arrangement, and so there's that to look at, with, and what that actually telegraphs about uh, Jinx slash Powder. And there's a whole conversation between Jinx and Vi before she even lights up the the whole scene. So then that's a wonderful conversation right there where Jinx is trying to figure out whether Vi will really accept her as is. And Vi almost passes that test. And then there's the whole scare that Jinx does for Vi with, you know, coming out with the the whole covered plate there so that you know you look at that and it's like wow <laughs> yeah that would really scare the heck out of you and because Vi was so scared with the way she said it 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 probably was kind of sad for Jinx to a certain extent so it's like so Vi thinks I'm so far gone that I would do something like that. It's probably like, you know, what was going the middle process is going inside her head. And then you have you have that aspect. And then you have the situation where Caitlin shows up and you know Jinx asks Vi to shoot her, which is a, which I can't imagine that Jinx would actually think that I would do so to do that kind of thing considering all the stuff that she'd seen so far for her but maybe maybe not that's kind of a, it's this is kind of a very interesting thing is because you can look at jinx and she was actually kind of jealous about savika being very you know being able to do various different things so, so there's a whole lot of abandonment abandonment issues that's been that's been going through her throughout you know all of six episodes of this particular series. So there's that. And then you have the situation where Vi is trying to encourage Jinx with, you know, the mentions of the names, but as you can see, that turns into like monsters inside her head. And that that so is a quick callback between the game that Vi and Jinx played when they were little about, you know, calling different monsters. And <laughs> and, and there's like there's that story and then this scene and there's a lot of parallels between that plus what's really fascinating is if you look at the scene where Jinx is being quote unquote healed uh, by the, the doctor there and the hallucination uh, that Jinx has of Vi and Powder coming down the stairs and Vi actually shooting powder actually gives credence to what Jinx said to Vi about how Vi helped her become Jinx. And you have to you have to really think about that to a certain extent. It's it's so it's really a wonderful scene. And there's just a lot of psychological drama that goes through here. Not only that, but you know how 
basically Caitlyn gets free, which you, know, you look at it and like that makes sense. And the tragedy that happens right after that, and the fact that Jinx accidentally shoots Silco. And the argument Silco had was probably more correct than what Vi said, and Vi, Vi probably wasn't aware enough aware enough of her own feelings uh, in the future. So you look at that, and and you and you can you can imagine like from Jinx's standpoint, it's like she killed Silco. It wasn't on purpose, and like she had killed almost everyone important to her. And just, you know, doing, going through the same trauma all over again. And it's just, it's incredibly tragic. And not only that, is like, you look at what she did afterwards, which is to screw just about everyone over unintentionally. <laughs> well, some, some of the people intentionally, but all the other people not so intentionally. It's like, oh, we were going to have a least decent ending here and oh goodness <laughs> situation which it's kind of like you you can understand her name and she owns it <laughs> in a certain unfortunate uh, sense so it's like there's all this stuff that's actually going into this scene all the stuff that led up to this scene all the stuff that just led up to the the horrible tragedy of this particular scene. I mean, if you understand, you know, the psychological psychology of what's going on inside of Vi and the other characters going on, it's like there is hardly any other way how this scene could have done differently. It it just was gonna kinda end up pretty close to this particular way. Which which is just wonderful. Because, I mean, you understand all the characters' motivations, you understand the conflicts, you understand the kind of the, the psych psychological instability, but even with that, you understand the kind of the dynamics that are going on in there. Because it's enough of it shown throughout the entire series that you can kind of figure it out. And there's, there's plenty of stuff that's telegraphed through different conversations between other characters. So that you can kind of, you kind of see where this thing is going to end up. Now, there's one element that's kind of odd, but I'm, I'm going to go in, into that in a different episode. But those are the top five scenes of what I of Arcane. These are the really wonderful character building moments. You know, the scene where Silco is talking with Vander statue. The scene where Jinx slash Powder pulls out the flare and the and the first reunion between her and Vi and what goes on in that. The opening scene of the entire series of, you know, the fire on the bridge and how that is just wonderfully done without any dialogue. Uh, the scene at the end of episode three, which is, which is actually two and two and one, which is like, you know, a bam, bam punch to the heart there. And then the final scene at the dinner table, which is just like, whoa, which really shows that the people who know how to write their characters and they know how to write stuff up to that scene. Everything just like works very well. So I will start with that and then I'll start getting into situations where it's like, why? Why does this even exist? So there are things that, of course, that are done very well and not done so well. So we'll look into that in the next video and I'll see you later. Bye bye.